Hi everybody! So, microbial fuel cells are pretty fascinating things and hold great potential. Of course there are challenges with them, but they work essentially because when microbes break things down, that is, eat the stuff in the soil, all that inorganic matter, they release electrons. When they release electrons, it's possible to capture them and use those captured electrons to power something. Now, initially it was thought that this would be incredibly difficult because you would need special microbes, but it turns out just about every microbe will do this and all you really need is a bunch of soil. And if you get some soil, you're gonna have the microbes in there that you need. Normally when bacteria break down the organic matter, they surrender their electrons to oxygen in the air in exchange for energy. But in a microbial fuel cell, the electrons are forced to take a detour. A microbial fuel cell is actually a very simple device. It's just a tube with electrons on either side. One which is sealed off so the bacteria don't have access to oxygen, and the other one which is exposed to oxygen. The microbes grow on an electrode, which is oxygen free, so they send off those electrons. Through a circuit where those electrons can be used to extract electrical power, the circuit's completed by the electrons ending up on the other side of the tube and combined with the oxygen in the air. So you're not going to light a city with these things anytime soon, but they are good for small devices, things like sensors. And with the growing internet of things and the desire for farmers to control crops, having hundreds of these things around is a thing that's wanted but nobody's going to do that if you have to run them from things like solar or batteries because basically you'd spend your life walking across a field replacing a thousand batteries. There's a lot of effort going into getting this to work and the main problem hasn't been the science behind how it's generated. The main problem has actually been the structure of the device itself. And that's because in order to function properly these devices have to work in dry or wet conditions. They have to work with oxygen and of course that's difficult if they're buried in the dirt. Microbial fuel cells actually first appeared in about 1911 but the problem stymied their use because their low power and unreliability meant that they couldn't be used particularly well and that's where Northwestern's McCormick School of Engineering stepped in and embarked on a long-term project to design a winning geometry. It's taken them something like 10 years, but the best performing prototype worked well in dry conditions as well as in waterlogged environment, and the secret behind its success? Instead of using a traditional design in which the anode and cathode are parallel to one another, the winning fuel cell leverages a perpendicular design. And it's been 3D printed. And the electrodes are made of carbon felt, which is cheap, abundant and innocuous. And although the entire device is buried, the vertical design ensures the top is flush with the ground surface and a 3D printed cap rests on top to prevent debris from falling inside and a hole on top and an empty air chamber running alongside the cathode enable consistent airflow. And on average the resulting fuel cell generated 68 times more power than the sensors needed and it lasted 120% longer than any other competing design and output 120% more power than other competing designs. Now the researchers say that all the components of their microbial fuel cell can just be bought locally from a hardware store and they plan on working on one that is completely biodegradable. What's really cool about this is they're very keen for open access and for people to adopt it so the research paper is um, open access and a lot of the materials are there for people if they want to actually go in there and make something themselves that will utilize this design concept. That's very cool cool is quite a lot of universities when they come up with an idea rush straight to the patent office. Here Northwestern is making it available. And in line with that open access public domain idea that they're uh, promoting, what they've done is create this video showing the complete construction. Now there is an issue or two in that parts of it are made from water jetted stainless steel, but to be honest a hacksaw file and some patients will be able to reproduce those parts and they show you how to put it together layer by layer along with the completed cell structure so that it would be 
pretty easy to follow should anybody want to do that. And anyway, I thought it was really interesting about how microbial fuel cells have developed into what are looking like very usable devices. And if anybody would want to do that, I would recommend that you check the paper. Of course, I'll put the paper link in the description of the bottom of this video. So if you want to jump over and have a better read at that, then certainly do. Now, the claim is that this dirt-based fuel cell battery will basically last forever. It's quite a claim, but it's quite an invention. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.